Masking is the most important skill you need to learn when it comes to editing, motion graphics, and visual effects. And in this video, I'm going to teach you the most used basic masks that DaVinci Resolve has to offer. So let's start with the easiest one as a warm up. Grab your footage and place it on the second video track. Next, grab one of the text titles. I'm going to use the basic one and place it beneath your footage. Disable video track two for now. Select the text title, go to the inspector. Let's type in something else and increase the size to fit the frame. Now go to the settings tab, scroll down until you see composite and click on the drop down menu. Scroll down and choose alpha. Now let's select the video and enable the track. Again, in the inspector, go to the composite, click on the drop down menu and choose foreground. Now let's resize the clip. Enable looping and let's play it back. And there you have it. This type of mask is called a clipping mask. And in this process, the text is acting like a mask for the video. And the video is only visible when the text is present. And you can use the same steps to put the video inside a PNG type image, like your logo, for example. Now that we're all warmed up, let's move on to the Fusion page and talk about the most used basic masks that are available here. And the first one is the rectangle mask. Click and drag it onto your note editor and connect it to the media in one. And as the name implies, it creates a rectangle mask. Now in the inspector, you have several controls. For example, center is the position on the X and Y axis, double click to reset. But you can also use the red arrows on screen. Width and height, or the sides of the mask. And if you want to change both width and height, just click on the corner, drag it out or drag it in. Double click to reset. Next, you see this dotted or interrupted line circle. If you click and rotate it, it rotates the angle of the mask. Or you can use the angle wheel in the inspector. Next, we have corner radius which creates rounded corners. Next is level, which acts like the opacity of the mask. Below level is filter. And here you have several types of filters. The most used one is fast Gaussian. So we're going to leave it at that. Beneath filter, you have soft edge, which acts like a feathering option for the mask and border width, which basically creates a border. This is uh, most visible when you uncheck solid, then you can see the entire mask is basically the border of the rectangle. Next to solid, you see invert. This basically will invert the clip. So let's check solid back on for a second and invert it. This way you can create the picture in picture effect by using the rectangle mask. Let's deselect invert and also solid. And once you deselect solid, you see you get two new options, position and length. Length refers to the length of the border and position refers to where the border is on the rectangle itself. Basically, you can create a line animation with the mask. And last, you have your border styles. Let me check solid back on. Border style for the corners. So beveled, round, or meter. And if you uncheck the solid, you get also for the ends of the border. So you get flat, rounded, and square. And this is the rectangle mask. Nothing fancy, simple, and easy to use. Now, the second one is the ellipse mask. Let's bring it on to the node editor, disconnect rectangle and connect the ellipse. Basically, the ellipse mask is the same as the rectangle mask, but instead of a rectangle, you got a circle or ellipse with your controls. Again, you can uncheck the solid and create a border width to create a circle animation if you want. The cap styles act the same, invert acts the same. The only thing you need to keep in mind is if you want to change the angle, you first need to change the height or the width. Otherwise, you won't see the changes in the angle. And that's basically it, even simpler than the rectangle. Now let's move to the third one, which is probably the most used out of all the basic masks, and that is the polygon mask. Let's uncheck and move the ellipse, move in the polygon and connect. it. Now, as you see, our clip is gone. Why is that? Well, because you need to draw your mask. And if you click and hold, you can create a curve in your mask. 
Now, if you want the clip to appear, you need to connect the mask. As you see, my cursor is a big plus sign. And when I go over the first point, it changes to a small plus sign with a circle. This means we can connect the mask and the clip is visible. Now, if you want to add points, just click on the line, add a new point, drag it, grab the handle to change it into a curve line. You can adjust the size in the inspector and keep the shape that it has. Move it, keeping the shape, border width again. So basically the same controls as with the rest when it comes to border width, position, length, and so on. The only new options we have are X, Y, Z rotation. So we have a rotation for each axis. And we also have a fill method, but I never used non-zero winding, so I always keep it on alternate. I advise you to do the same. As for the rotations, as you can see, X rotation on the on the X axis, Y axis, and Z axis. And the last option in the inspector is shape animation. And as you can see, the keyframe is already active. This means that once you drag the node onto your node editor, it places a keyframe at the current frame where your playhead is positioned. So for example, our first polygon node is at frame zero. So it placed a keyframe there. If I move it to frame 30, for example, and change the shape, of the mask, it activates another keyframe. And as you can see, if I move the playhead, you can see the keyframe here. And if I play it back, you can see the shape changing. And the best part is you don't need to set a keyframe for just one point. Let's go to frame 50 and change the shape completely. Also, you can click and drag over multiple points and you can move them simultaneously. Now let's play this back. and the shape has changed. All while using three keyframes and the most animation was done in just one keyframe. This is why the polygon mask is one of the most used basic masks in Fusion, in both the free version and the studio version of DaVinci Resolve. And to deactivate all keyframes, including the first one that is automatically set once you bring in the node, just place your playhead where the keyframes are, click on the diamond icon to deactivate it, and use one of the arrows that's next to the diamond icon to move to the next keyframe and deactivate. And that's all for the polygon mask. Now let's bring in the last one, the B-spline mask. Grab it and drag it in, disconnect the polygon 1, let's delete polygon 2 and connect the B-spline. And as you can already see, the B spline also has an auto animation option built in, which we can deactivate right now. And the same as with the polygon mask, you need to draw your mask first to reveal the clip. Okay, and now maybe you're wondering, we have polygon mask and B spline mask that kind of looks the same, so what's the difference? Well, the B spline mask is identical to the polygon mask in all aspects, except one. The B spline requires only one point to control the smoothing of the spline segment. As you can see, it doesn't have any handles because you just place one point and it already creates a smooth line. This means that the B-spline mask requires fewer controls than the polygon mask and far fewer points to create a smooth shape. And the controls in the inspector are the same and work the same as for the polygon mask. Now let's move on to the color page and our final set of basic masks. These can be found in the window section of the color page and they're named power windows. When working with power windows, it is better to work on different nodes than your source node. So in order to add a new node, right click on the existing one, add node and add serial node. And as a keyboard shortcut, it's alt or option if you're on a Mac and the S key. Now let's select the second node and let me show you the power windows we have. First. Linear is a rectangle with a set of options that you can see in the transform and softness panels and can be adjusted in the panel itself or by manipulating the mask itself. Next, we have circle, which is similar to linear, but it is a circle, same options. Third is polygon, which looks like the linear power window, but it has fewer options and serves a different purpose in a way. Fourth, the curved power window and probably the most used power window of them all. It behaves similarly to the polygon node in the fusion page. And the final one, the gradient, which does what the name implies, creates a gradient mask. Now, in order to see the mask, go up here under the zoom and select highlights. And as you can see, the gradient mask appears. 
Now, next to the power window on the right, you have your invert option. And if you have multiple power windows selected, you have a isolation option to know with which power window you're working. As you can see, I can manipulate the linear power window and the circle is grayed out. But once I switch, the linear is grayed out and the circle is active. Now, let me show you the first thing you can do with power windows in terms of masking. Let's deactivate the circle and leave the linear one. And let's place the playhead at the beginning of this clip and manipulate the power window to fit only half of the music player. Let's disable the highlights and move to the tone curve tool. Here, I'm going to adjust the curve and also the temperature. And you already can see the power of the power window. Now let me go back to the window section and let me grab this side of the mask with the red dot, which represents the softness or feathering of the mask and drag it out to create a smooth gradient on the left side and now for the right side. Also, let me extend the mask a little bit and zoom to fit. Now, if I move the playhead, the power window stays in place and not on the selected area. In order to fix that, we're going to select the node with the power window and go to the tracker. We're going to leave the default options of pan, tilt, zoom, rotate, 3D and clip, and we're going to track forward. Now, if we play it back, the power window stays in place. And this is another power of the power window in combination with the tracker. Now, let me give you a bonus tip on the power window and tracker combination. Let's place the playhead at the beginning of this clip, zoom in with the mouse wheel and press and hold the mouse wheel down to move the clip. Let's add two nodes, Alt or Option S. Select the second node, go to the power window. This time we're going to use the circle. We're going to position it on one of these screws. Let's zoom out just a little bit to resize the mask. And I'm going to make it as small as possible, even the feathering. So it covers only the screw. Let's zoom to fit. Let's go to the tracker, leave the default settings and track forward. Place the playhead at the beginning again, zoom in move the clip and let's move the mask somewhere around here and increase the mask and its feathering. Next, change from clip to frame and move to sizing. Here we're going to use the pan and tilt options to move the grip tape or a portion of it over the screw. Let's go back to the power window and feather this one just a little bit more and zoom to fit and play it back. And that is how you use power windows to mask something out. And these are the most used basic masks that are available in the free version and the studio version of the Mitch Resolve. And if you want to learn more about masking, check out this video where I teach you how to create dynamic mask animations. And don't forget to drop a comment to let me know what you want to learn next. And until next time, take care.